Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Cardone Solutions Podcast. I am your host of the Cardone Solutions Podcast. My name is David Bradley, Senior Sales and Marketing Manager with Grant Cardone. Now, if you're wondering what happens on the Cardone Solutions Podcast, you may be a first-timer, so let me get you clued in. And if you are a first-timer, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. For those of you that keep coming back uh, episode after episode after episode, thank you so much for being here. For all of you, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, please feel free to do so. Also, if you're getting something out of it, make sure that you're sharing this out into the cyberspace. Tweet this sucker out. Tag me in it so I know you did. Uh, Throw it up on LinkedIn. Put it on Facebook. Wherever it is that you like to socialize, media-wise, share it so other people can get something from it, too. Don't be so getting something from it, I guarantee you somebody else will too. So make sure you get it out there. Today we're going to be talking about company culture, and I'll get into that specifically. Stay with me through this, even if you are a company of one. So now, what goes on on the Cardone Solutions Podcast? Well, today we're going to be talking about company culture, but typically here's how this thing rolls. I'm going to go out into cyberspace, and I'm going to find content of Grant Cardone's that is free. 80%, maybe even 85% of what we do at Cardone Training Technologies is 100 percent free. So I'm going to find it. Today's, uh, for example, is a blog post that we put up. I'm going to find this content. I'm going to take it. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to dissect it. I'm going to give it back to you uh, with some measurable action ideas and some things to think with. This one was really easy for me to put together. Uh, But I want you to be able to take this information and then plug it into your sales and your business and your life and do what with it? That would be get a result. And since we're going to address the issue of company culture, today's episode is being brought to you by Cardone University. This is the number one sales training program in the galaxy. Whether you are a business of one, 100, 100,000, a 15 to 30% increase is entirely possible, if not guaranteed, when you implement our four-step process. And if you need to improve your company culture, this is the way to do it. Stay to the end because I'm going to give you some ways to access Cardone University for free. And I'm also going to give you a link that you can go to to get four videos with Grant talking about and enhancing, adding wood to the fire that I'm about to build. Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go. Let me start off with a question. What is your company culture like? So whether you are a uh, company of one or 10 or 100 or 1,000, more, less, somewhere in there, think about the culture in your company. Have you ever heard the phrase, as in the macro, so in the micro? What about the phrase, you don't build your house on a sand foundation? Houses and buildings, they need to be built to withstand the environment they are in. So, for example, uh, in California, you you have to have, uh, your house needs to be, or your building, for that matter, needs to be earthquake-proof. And uh, if you're in South Florida, then you need to have some hurricane-proof action going on, right? So the question would be, is your company crisis proof. So as I mentioned, today's episode, I'm pulling it from a blog that Grant did. And in in the blog, Grant lists off three things that you need to do in order to build uh, a company culture that's dynamic and durable. So I mean, just think about what's going on right now, you know? So you want to just keep in mind these three things and we're going to go over all of them. And I want you to start keeping in mind or thinking with how does this apply to all companies. That's Fortune 500, that's small business, that's the entrepreneur, that's the solopreneur, people working from home. Hi. Okay. They need to do these three things. We do. All of us. And I know what you're thinking already. You're like, hey, uh, I'm an employee and my company doesn't do any of them. Right? I've even given you the three and you might, you probably already know that your company doesn't do any of them. Right. Okay. Here's the deal. You do them. Okay. Be the company of one first. Got it. You want to start with you. Influence always starts from within. If you like the sound of that, tweet it out and then tag me in it. Influence always starts with it within quote of the day from David R. Bradley. From at David R. Bradley. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. All right, hopefully somebody does that. That'd be awesome. Influence always starts from within at David R. Bradley. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over this list with you. 
Um, then I'm going to give you some tips right from the blog with best practices on how to create a crisis proof culture. And again, as I mentioned, I, as I'm going over this stuff, I want you to just think with how can I do this? Don't think about why you can't. Don't think about uh, why that wouldn't work in your company uh, because you're different because we've heard it all before. Okay. As Grant says, to change, you got to change. Okay. So think about how can you do it? How are you going to tackle it? So the top three ways to create a crisis proof company. Number one, establish a daily morning meeting of champions. Two, provide a dynamic culture with a dynamic space. Three, the team is the core of the culture. Okay. So there are five ways. Five ways you can have a morning meeting of champions. And this happens in the Miami office every single day. Open this thing up before it even starts. Have some energizing music going on when everyone's walking in, right? It loosens people up. Um, people are just getting in the office. They're starting to wake up. You may have a few under-caffeinated performers on hand, okay? So with the energizing music, people start dancing around. They start bobbing their heads. They start moving and grooving, right? Getting loosey-goosey, okay? Then also make sure that you have a respected single leader in the organization that is managing the flow and the energy of the meeting. So it's it's like a master of ceremony, if you will. But it's one person, they need to be very, very high on the totem pole, and they run that thing. They're in control of the flow and the energy. Okay, third thing, uh, find a way to have every single team member that's in the room with you, that they're engaged, and, and they're cooperating within the meeting. Present at least one success story. These should be You should have good news only meetings. This is not the time to browbeat. This is not the time to beat people up. This is not the time to complain about what they are not doing or how they're not doing something right. Good news only. Share customer success stories. This could be if you've got some video testimonial from a client, drop that thing up on the flat screen so everybody can see it and participate in it. Read it if you have to. However you get it out there, but good news only. And then you want to set the day up for success by concluding the meeting with an inspiring statement or a quote that is in line with company values, right? So in our office from in Miami, we'll, we'll crack open a Grant Cardone book and we'll flip through the pages and someone goes, stop, and you stop, and whatever is there, you just, you read it, two or three sentences. It's, it's that easy, right? Uh, if you use Cardone University in your company now, end it with, uh, Grant's got a hundred ways to stay motivated. Drop one of those in there. Those are like, or top traits of great salespeople. Those videos are like, a minute, two minutes max, okay? Something that is inspiring that gets everybody reflecting on company values and taking some action today so that when they go into the meeting, they're leaving their day or they're leaving the meeting going into their day in the right frame of mind. Now remember, okay, solopreneurs, how do you apply this to what you do? How do you have a morning meeting with yourself every single day, right? Start thinking with that. Something that, that you have, why not start your morning with some good music? right? Why not um, look at customer success stories already, right? Why not wrap it up with a video from Cardone University? Why not? It's a great way to start your day, okay? So here's uh, six ideas for providing a dynamic culture with a dynamic space. So I want you to think about the space you're in right now at work. Is it dynamic? Okay, so that means what? It means it's clean, means it's up to date, that you've got uh, windows that let in light and life. Grant's not big on carpets. It's never a good choice. So if you can keep your office carpet clean, that's great. If not, keep the carpet clean. Right? What did I just say? No, if you can keep your office carpet free, there we go. That's great. If not, keep it clean. Okay. Uh, if you're in an office and you can, drop the cubicle thing and, and, and just put out, so it just, you want, you want openness. You want an open workspace. Okay. You want to give your team uh, room to work independently and have some privacy, but also to be able to stay connected and communicate with each other. Uh, third thing, the executive offices uh, in Miami, they have literally floor to ceiling, like glass doors. 
to limit, literally limit the separation between the team and leadership. And those doors pretty much, they're always open anyway. So Grant is also going to encourage you to have an open door policy that makes communication easy and encouraged. Fourth thing, in Grant's office, when you go there, every wall and even at most doors are canvassed with inspirational messages, images, things that keep people motivated, inspired. I mean, even in the men's room, like on the urinal, there's a, there's a bumper sticker that says, who's got my money? <laughs> like they're not, seriously, that's true. True story. If you want to see a picture of it, I can send it to you. Okay. It brings positivity into the environment and into the office. Okay. So um, number five, in addition to the 10x classroom where we hold our morning meetings they have in miami there's like several different open spaces where teams can go brainstorm and collaborate bounce ideas around um, and you want you want your team to be able to have like these open spaces open areas where they can just put their creative heads together and, and solve problems and flow and then the sixth thing is great once like Everyone who works there to be able to give their very best. It's very important for him. Which is why, like, they use only the most contemporary, modern, and advanced technology available. You want everything to be up to date, everything to be performing at a high rate so it doesn't slow you down. I mean, think about that for a second. When your tech ain't working, doesn't that just grind your gears? Doesn't it just drive you a batty, nutty? Right? So make sure your tech is up to date and functioning properly. And then the last one here in terms of creating a crisis proof uh, company culture is the, the team is the core of the company. The team is the core of the culture. So there are three only practices from your Uncle G to solidify your team. Number one, lead by example. You want to hold yourself to the highest standard. And your team should hold themselves to it too. But until you do, you can't ethically push them to do the same. They will follow in your footsteps no matter what you do. Show them what it takes to be the most successful person in the room. There are three words that you will never hear in the Miami office. I can attest to this. Not my job. It's everybody's job. Everybody accepts full and total responsibility for everything. It's amazing. Third thing is, there is a, like I mentioned this earlier, there's an open door policy over there that encourages communication, collaboration, input. Everybody's opinion matters. Okay. No one's afraid to share their ideas because their perspective isn't yours. <laughs> it's different. Okay. So it's good to look at everything. So to wrap all this up, okay, creating a culture, it's a process. It's not, you can't like flip a switch. There's no genie in a bottle that you're going to, you're not going to rub the bottle. Genie pops out and goes, poof, company culture is awesome now. Right. It's a process. It takes time. Um, but it is something that every leader, must do in order for a company to prosper. I mean, the bottom line is this, the in your face, um, punch in the nose is this. Without culture, nobody's gonna wanna work for you. And so you'll never grow. And if you can't define your company culture right now, the reason for that, I hate to say it, but man, you gotta go look in the mirror. As a leader, your words and your actions send a message to the team. What message are you sending to the team? And if you're having a challenge, which is really an opportunity, of defining your company's culture, and you want to create the type of team and work ethic like Grant's done, I'd really recommend, highly recommend taking a look at Cardone University because 82% of the managers we talk to, they don't have time to train and develop their team the way they wish they could. How much is going on right now? 
So what Cardone University can do for you, again, not a magic wand, no magic beans here. It's going to take some work, going to take some effort, going to take some commitment, going to take some working with us. It's a partnership. But Cardone University is going to help you really dial in on your existing goals. Like, where do you want your company to be? Not just in terms of production, but what kind of culture do you want to have over there? And how does that connect to your own bigger purpose, your, your, your personal purpose, your missions in life? Like, why you do what you do? So we can take the goal, the purpose, and the performance and tie it all together. So we'll have training specifically for leadership development, but then we also have training for how to run a sales meeting, turnkey sales meetings waiting to happen. So if you're a manager, you'll never have to, you'll, you'll, this will never be a sentence you utter again when you get on Carter University. What am I going to talk about in today's meeting? It's gone. It'll never happen again. One-on-one -on -one sales meetings, motivational meetings, group skill development, coaching, independent study, practice, role play. That dynamic meeting I was talking about, it's, our, it's in Cardone University waiting for you, right? You want to build that culture. You want to build that dynamic space. You want to solidify your team. Cardone University can help you do that. So to get some free access to it. Also get um, four free videos with Grant talking about the value of using Cardon University from a leadership and company culture perspective. Head on over to cardonesolutions.com forward slash 10x your team. That's cardonesolutions.com forward slash 10x your team. When you get there, you're going to find those uh, four different videos I was talking about, but you will also find uh, a little form that you can fill out to get on my calendar to take a look at this program and see some ways that you could leverage Cardone University in with your meetings, your group training, your one-on-one -on -one coaching, and your independent study and practice for Okay, CardoneSolutions.com forward slash 10x your team. Last but not least, my name is David Bradley. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Would love to hear what you got from this particular episode. You can tweet it to me at David R. Bradley. Uh, send an email out, david at grantcardone.com. Anything I can do to be of service to you. I will leave you with the words of Grant Cardone, which is be great. Nothing else pays. See you soon.